What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes. And in this video, we're gonna be doing tweet sentiment analysis using the OpenAI API. So we can paste in a tweet and then you can press the button to get the tweet sentiment from the OpenAI API. For example, this is a positive tweet. We can also do a negative tweet and get the tweet sentiment where it's gonna show us this is more negative. This video is a great introduction to working with the OpenAI API. Let's get started by going to an empty folder in Visual Studio Code and saying npm create vite at latest, the name of our app, so I'm gonna say app, then dash dash, and then dash dash template, and then react. Then you can press enter. We can then CD into the app folder here, which is this app that just got fully generated for us. And we can NPM install all the different packages. Let's get started by going over to the source folder, going into app.jsx. And now we can create a basic interface for our users to interact with. So I'm gonna go into this return statement and delete everything within this div. So it should just be the div class name app. Then I'm going to make a div that's going to hold our text area. This is going to be a text input that our user can put their tweet in. We're going to have a placeholder that'll show paste your tweet here, and we'll give it a calls of 50, so 50 characters wide, and then a rows of 10, so 10 character rows. We can then make another div, which we are going to put the button that's going to say get the tweet sentiment from open AI API. Looks good to me. Let's npm run dev and see what it looks like so far. Amazing, so a pretty simple, nice interface. We want this value of the text area to be saved to a state so we can use it in our API request. So we can change this state at line six and make it say tweet and then set tweet and make it an empty string initially. Whenever our text area changes, so on the on change event, we can grab the event specifically from the on change. We can then set the tweet equal to the event dot target since the events coming from the text area this text area will be the target so you can then get the value by saying dot value from that specific text area this button down here is eventually going to make an api call so we can make a function that gets called when this button gets pressed we can say function call open ai api and so when we say on click down here we want to then say call open ai api and for now, we can just have a console.log in this function saying calling the open AI API. So a pretty simple setup. We can also make another state that's going to hold the value of the sentiment that we get returned from the API. So we can say const sentiment and set sentiment is equal to a use state of a string. So this is going to be either negative or positive like we saw before. And so if we want to show this sentiment to our user, we can go down here and say, if sentiment does not equal an empty string, then we want to show its value. So we can do a little h3 and say, this tweet is, and then the value of the sentiment. And because we use this question mark, that's kind of like saying, if this statement is true, show this, then we can say the colon here to say else show this. I'm just gonna show null, which means show nothing in React. Amazing, so we can also console.log the tweet. And so let's run over to our React application and see these logs happening in real time. You'll see if I type anything, it's going to be saved to that state, which is then getting logged. And if I press this button, it's then going to call the OpenAI API. But we're not really calling anything yet. Let's get set up with OpenAI. We can get started by going to openai.com slash API, and then pressing log in. Log in with whatever account type you want, once you're fully logged in, you'll be brought to a page like this. One of the first things we have to do is go to the top right and press view API keys. As you guys will see on my account, I already have a handful of keys, but you guys will just see an empty list here. Press the button that says create new secret key. This key will only ever be shown once. So you wanna make sure to copy it right now and paste it over in your React application. So I'm going to say const API underscore key is equal to this. I'm saving this as a variable to keep things simple, but to make it more secure, you can save this as an environment variable as well. But now we have the API key and we're good to go. Let's go back over to the examples page. So go to the top here and press examples. This will show you all the different pre-trained models OpenAI has to offer. I'm going to be using the tweet model here specifically this advanced tweet classifier. But this tutorial should help you with any of these models as long as you follow the steps I show you. So you can press advanced tweet classifier and you'll see all the different settings for this specific configuration that allows us to get the sentiment of certain tweets by talking specifically to the text Davinci 3 engine. The important part of this is this API request right here. 
we can take a look at this curl request specifically because curl is kind of like the pure HTTP request. We can take this curl request and translate it over into a fetch request, which we can use in React. So I'm going to copy this link at the top of the curl request, go over to our React application, and I'm going to say fetch that link specifically. And because we're talking to an API, I'm going to make this an async function, and we are going to await the fetch. Alongside just the link we want to talk to, we have to give a bunch of different options as to how we want to talk to this specific request. For example, we have to say method is equal to post because curl by default is doing a post method. We can also see these two things with the dash h tag. This means they are headers. So we can copy these over and I'm just gonna paste them in right here to show as examples. We can then set the headers of our request inside of the fetch here to be equal to, first of all, content, dash type, because I'm looking at this header right here, is equal to application slash JSON. Then we can set the authorization header equal to bearer plus API underscore key, which is that const that we have above. And so then this dash D is the data of the request, or in our case, the body of the request. So I'm going to copy this data object and then bring it over into our code. So I'm gonna say const API body is equal to that object from the curl request. The one thing we want to change is the prompt. This is the default prompt that they're going to give you in the request, but you can change this to anything you want. The easiest way of thinking about prompts is it's kind of like talking to ChatGPT if you've ever done that. So we can ask this prompt specifically, what is the sentiment of this tweet? Question mark. And then we can add the tweet that the user entered in this text area down here. In this video, I'm not going to go in depth as to what all these different kind of parameters mean down here, but they pretty much allow you to make the model specific to how you want to use it. The most easy one to explain is max underscore tokens. Some questions take more, you know, brain power from a computer than others. If you ask a really complicated question, it's likely to cost more tokens. If you ask a really simple question, it's not gonna cost as much. And so max tokens helps it so you don't make an API request, it's gonna be very, very expensive. And so to put the API body inside the actual body of our request down here, we can do a comma and say body is equal to json.stringify API body. And this json.stringify is just turning this object into a string format that can then be sent alongside our request. And so that's all we need to do for the request. When the fetch statement is done, we can say dot then, then the data that has been returned like this, we can then run some logic on this data. And I'm going to say return data.json. So it's getting the data from our request and then translating it into a JSON format that we can use. We can then do another dot then statement, which is then going to just take in data. And even though we use data twice here, just to not confuse you guys, what this data is saying is it's saying, take whatever this return statement is and save it into this variable. And so now that we know that this data right here is a JSON, we can then console.log data to show that JSON object. Let's go back into our application and see this console.log in real time. So I'm gonna make a very positive tweet here. I'll say Cooper codes has epic React tutorials. Then we can get the tweet sentiment by pressing this button here. And as you'll see, we're going to get that complete response from our API, which is great news. The response is going to be saved under this choices property. And for this example, we're only ever going to be sending in one tweet at a time. This choices array allows you to have like five tweets at a time if you want. But for us, we just want to look at the first tweet. And you'll see inside of the first thing of this array is a text that shows us the response from the AI. And it's showing positive. And so we can get this text here and show it to our user. To think about how you get this text is you can look at this object is called data inside of our code. So we can say data dot choices, which is an array go to the first index of choices, so the zero index, and then go to the dot text property. So like I just said, data dot choices, the first index dot text is how we get there. You'll see there were some weird new lines inside there. And so to get rid of those new lines, I'm going to say dot trim, which is just going to get rid of anything in the front and the end of our text. We can then set the sentiment state here to this value. This means that we are going to show this string which is either going to be positive or negative. And because we already have everything wired up, check this out. 
we can go down here and this sentiment, so if this value ever gets changed, is going to be shown to our user. So after this set sentiment gets ran, we should expect to see that sentiment be shown to our user right here. So I'll make a positive tweet like Cooper Code's viewers are the best. Yeah, I know, I know. And look, this tweet is positive. And this is amazing because it's using the OpenAI API in real time. We're getting responses right away. We can also do negative tweets like Cooper Code's sucks at React. And it's going to say this tweet is negative. And so the AI is kind of making decisions there. I do have one more cool thing to show you guys though. If we scroll up to the top here and go to our API body, we can look at this prompt again. Just like ChatGPT, we can really ask the DaVinci GPT here whatever we want. For example, we can add on to this question. Like let's say, what is the sentiment of this tweet with a value between zero and 10? 10 being it's very positive. And so we can actually ask for more, you know, detailed information. The caveat here is this prompt is probably going to be a little bit more expensive. It's going to use more tokens. So if we go back over to our application and say something in the middle, like Cooper Codes is an okay developer, right? We can get the tweet sentiment and it's going to show us right in the middle. This tweet is a five. So it's not super negative. It's not really super positive either. And we can do something super positive like, you know, Cooper Codes is crazy good at React. He is probably the best in the world. I don't know if that's true, but I'm just trying to get something crazy because maybe we'll get a 10 out of 10 here. That gave us a nine out of 10. And so these sentiments are kind of defined by the AI models we use. And we can also say something negative like Cooper Codes is a mega noob at React. That's kind of funny. So I don't know what it's going to say to that, but let's check it out. Oh, okay. So calling me a mega noob is a two out of 10. It's a pretty negative statement. And so this is just showing you guys the kind of cool things you can do with the open AI API. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you guys are interested in more full stack projects that also incorporate the open AI API alongside, you know, just like more normal stuff like MongoDB or Apollo server or Superbase, feel free to subscribe and check out the videos on my channel. Another amazing thing about this API is how much it costs. It really doesn't cost that much. I messed with this API a lot before even creating this video and it was all done on this account. It only cost me two cents, which is like almost nothing for what it's providing. If you guys just did the calls that I did in this video alone, it probably wouldn't even be like half of one cent. Like it seriously isn't that much in terms of how much value you're getting. And I bring that up not because it's cool to do your own personal projects, but it's getting to the point where with AI, you can really start to introduce like AI features if you have like a software as a service application. And these AI features can be valuable to your users and they won't cost you like a million dollars to implement. And so I definitely think platforms like OpenAI are the future of adding really cool functionality to your applications. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching.